Hey, Jay Torres here. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about my experience attending my first ever uh, hacking conference, uh, which was Hack Space Con about a week ago now. Um, really, I wanted to start this video by thanking David Mies on LinkedIn. He had a giveaway for this conference. Um, I entered it through traditional comment, like, share, and somehow I got a ticket through David Meese. Um, I am really grateful for that ticket because I believe it was like about $200 or $300 for like the last minute tickets if you didn't get an early bird. And unfortunately, um, I didn't get the early bird tickets. So I was looking um, into those like pricey tickets and I don't believe it was going to be like feasible for me to attend. So it was a huge shout out to David Meese. Definitely check out. Um, his LinkedIn, I'll definitely put it below. And I think, I believe he's also releasing a book um, soon about like a red team operator handbook. So definitely check out his content. Um, he's, he's a great guy. Um, really what I wanted this video to, to help you guys out with, um, whether you're new or you've been in the in the field for a long time it's whether hack space con is worth attending um when i first heard of hack space con i was super excited because i love uh space and i love cybersecurity, and this event is really um tailored towards like bridging um, these two subjects together right um a lot of the subjects that were being um, taught like from different speakers were space orientated, uh, mostly like satellite based, because uh, of course we're talking about hacking and we talk about the majority of the assets that we have on in the space domain um, are satellites, right? Um, so some of the talks were about um, the communications of a satellite, how it communicates the ground station, um, more of like a high level overview of those topics. Some of them got um in a lot of detail um and then some of them also got into the hacking aspect of satellites um kind of how you would go about maybe doing denial of service and and kind of kind of that thing of course everything that we were being taught in the conference um is for ethical uh reasons right uh, no one's going out there and saying hey hack uh, a satellite um like a real satellite without someone's permission right because uh, that would be very illegal um and specifically like government satellites you definitely do not want to mess with those um so yeah a lot a lot of space orientated talks throughout the conference um this was my first ever conference um like hacking conference and i didn't know what it was going to be like i thought it was amazing um one of the things which i have right here is the badges I'm not sure if every hacking conference is like this. I believe most of them are like this though. The badges, they tend to be some sort of like circuit board um, type of badge. And the one that you got at Hack Space Con was this kind of like rocket, uh, which has like, it says Hack Space Con on the side. And they have like the little hacker on the, on the window right there. Um, and then you just have the circuit board on the back with to triple A batteries. Uh, my batch is slightly modified uh, because uh, there's different, uh, what is what are they called? Um, villages, this is what they call them. They're kind of like workshops around the conference. And one of the ones that I went to specifically was the hardware village, the hardware, hardware hacking village. And what they were doing was they offered like different components, like resistors, like a, a P, I don't know if it's called like a PCB, um, just like a chip for the circuit board and different LEDs. And they would, they were, they were super helpful, the volunteers there. Um, I hadn't soldered in a minute and I hadn't soldered something like this um, ever. So they helped me out um, trying to like um, solder a lot of these different components into the board because it didn't come like this. Um, what it did though, is it gave it this different capability. So like if you, there's like a little switch on the back and if you use reverse it, reverse the circuit board, 
um, you get this like pattern of like I guess the thrust, like the propulsion of the rocket, kind of like igniting. It was pretty cool, and um, then you can just toggle it back um, to the regular mode that it came in. Um, only bad side is you can't turn it off unless you take out the batteries. But yeah, who who cares about that? Uh, yeah, the little things like that were really cool. Um, got to learn how to how to solder the badge and give it that different um a different like LED pattern. Um, and then you just got to network while you're soldering this thing because a bunch of other people might be like really good at web hacking and all kinds of, of different hacking. And all of a sudden they're soldering a circuit board for the first time in their career. So it's really cool. Um, definitely recommend anyone to, to try that out. Uh, there were other villages. It was also, the, I don't know if it's called the Locks lock picking village or if it was called something else but it was tailored towards lock picking um really cool i've tried like doing the the clear uh lock picking um like kit where it comes with the lock and it's clear and you can see the pins and i tried that on the past like um here at home and i was able to break that but whenever i went to a real lock i had a lot of trouble um going from the, the these trainer locks to to a real lock so over there i got um to sit down and try some real locks i didn't have any success at all during um during the conference because it was just such a short time frame um funny enough like i sit down i was trying to like break into one of these locks and this guy sits right next to me i kind of like recognize him right because i watch a lot of youtube videos um trying to learn uh, hacking and i recognize him but i'm not too sure who he is he starts like kind of talking to me about like how the lock works and kind of like how to approach um lock picking right um like specifically like single pin um picking right so he, he starts talking to me about that and then i'm like wait aren't you tiberius Cause, you know you don't want to like be wrong in just kind of assume someone is someone just because of how they look but i was like 90 percent sure he was tiberius so i asked and sure enough it was tiberius uh, so he gave me a a couple of a few stickers so here's like some evidence this is one of his stickers i don't know not focusing i guess just like the tiberius uh statue with the glasses it's like one of his uh like profile pictures it was really cool. Um, got to talk to him, and immediately after that, I went to his uh, speaker event where he was actually teaching um, a class on SQL injection, um, which which went into more depth than what most people do when they talk about like traditional SQL injections. It was a really cool speaker event. Um, what else? What else? Again, the the venue is something I should have started with. The venue for the event was in the Kennedy Space Center um, in Cape Canaveral. Um, and I actually brought my Wi-Fi pineapple, the one that you guys have probably seen on my previous video, um, which is like this rugged case that has like warning uh, a warning sticker on it, like a hazard sticker and like a bunch of like yellow and black tape. So it looks like kind of like a bomb right like if you looked at it from a distance and you see this black box of antennas you probably think it is a bomb right um and i i, I brought it in because of course i wanted to show it off and i also wanted to i guess walk a uh, war walk the the kennedy space center um and they have like this security um, where you have actually have to check your bags and security of course was like hesitant of letting me through with that but again i showed him inside the case he saw that it wasn't a bomb it wasn't anything hazardous just a computer with a couple antennas right so they knew there was a hacking conference going on so that probably helped persuade them into letting me in with my uh, wi-fi pineapple and and so they did so it was definitely interesting uh, experience getting that through um, uh, it was definitely a conversation starter, right? Because a lot of people are just asking, like, what is that? 
Um, and I can just explain like some of the components and how I have it running. So it's really, really cool. Um, really enjoyed it. Um, the other piece of this is, of course, networking, right? That, that's probably your number one reason for going to a conference. Um, sure, you get to learn a lot um, and do things that you usually are not comfortable doing at home. But really the biggest reason to attend these, I guess in my opinion, is networking. Because I got to meet so many people from different nationalities, different countries. Um, they spoke um, different languages as their first language. And it was just really cool getting to meet people from different areas of the world and seeing how they got into hacking and the stuff that they're actually up to right now. Um, I. One of the booths that I went to in the conference was Raices because um, I'm I'm Puerto Rican and I had heard of the organization but I never actually uh, talked to people from there uh, and they were really helpful, uh, really friendly people, um, and I got to make a lot of I don't say like friends there um, because you know, we talked about like our past experiences and getting to cybersecurity, what we're up to right now. Um, and it was just really cool being able to speak like my first, my native language in Spanish with some of these people. Um, I'm talking about like one of my favorite subjects, which was cybersecurity, right? Because not that many times where I get to speak about cybersecurity. And then it's even a smaller the time where I can talk about cybersecurity and Spanish um, with other cybersecurity professionals. So it was really cool. Um, I'd say like I'm in a place now where I kind of understand what I need to do to progress um, in this field. And that is largely due to some of the professionals I talk there um, then giving me tips on like taking better notes, um, just having, um, having better like goal setting and being able to like track uh, my progress through that. But definitely the biggest tip that I got was taking notes because up to now, all the capture the flag competitions that I've done with WGU and like hack the box and try hack me, all the notes that I had taken for that are on a Google sheet. Um, of course, it's helpful that I'm taking notes, but the method that I was using to take notes was absolutely horrible because when it came to actually going back through my notes and trying to find something that I'd done in the past, it was very inefficient. So uh, one of the um, one of the things that he recommended was Obsidian, which I'd never heard of. And that's something I'm trying out right now. Of course, there's like um, many different platforms to take notes, like OneNote and, and Obsidian. I'm not sure of the other one that other people use, but there's many different types one of the things he just said is just pick one and stick with it because you just don't really want to overthink this, right? As long as it, you're efficiently taking notes and then you can go back through them in an efficient manner, that's all that matters, right? Um, and when you talk about certifications like the OSCP, having good notes matters a lot because you might have um, a time constraint and you just want to maybe you see something that looks similar to something that you have done in the past and you don't want to go through google to try and find an answer so you just go through your notes and you can officially figure out how to uh, do something again um, that you've done in the past right so definitely definitely recommend going to hackspace con next year um, i'll definitely try and attend other conferences just to, to see how they're they're like two. I heard a lot of people mention B sites. Um, so I'll definitely try and go to one of those. Um, yeah, Hackspace Con was absolutely great. The, the volunteers, the organizers, they were super nice. Great public speakers. Like, literally, uh, was it Dave Kennedy who was like the opening speaker for the event? Um, I thought that it would just be like a like a regular speech and someone just saying welcome to the event but no that this guy who's who is like a as the chief hacking officer of two different companies this guy's very technical for 
for the the level that he's at um like in his career um, so i found that like very surprising to me and very inspiring right to have someone who's a leader but also very technical um in the field so definitely recommend hackspace con again if you guys have any questions or like to shoot me any messages on linkedin um i have all my social media before for below i'm still working on my wgu uh review video once that's out i'll definitely be announcing that but until the next video see you guys